Hey all you cool cats and kittens. I'm Emily Sue and this is my assistant Muffin. Today we're going to show you how to collect, preserve, and paint with beautiful leaves and flowers you can find around your home. Come on, let's go! I began by looking for various leaves with interesting shapes such as maple, sycamore, Japanese red maple, Christmas fern, violets, whatever kind of evergreen this is, spruce maybe? And I also collected one of my irises that had already bloomed and begun to wilt. It was pretty drippy, gotta get all that water out of there. I did not collect any poison ivy. Leaves of three, let it be. Once I gathered my leaves, I laid them all out, then began to tear sheets of wax paper to the right size to fit in a big heavy book. I laid each leaf and flower out on the wax paper and folded them up inside the book. I took all my books inside and stacked them up in a safe spot. Ideally, it's best to let the leaves sit and dry out for a couple of days. Sweet Muffin decided to help. Every ounce of pressure counts. After letting the leaves dry for a couple of days, I opened up my books and removed all of my dried leaves and flowers. I wanted to try some different media, so I gathered my acrylic paints, watercolors, and prepared tea and coffee. First I did a tea and coffee painting by placing leaves down and then painting over them to create silhouettes. The coffee left some grounds behind, but I was able to wipe them off once my paint had dried. For my second painting, I laid down my iris and used watercolor tube paint to copy the flower directly onto my palette, trying to match its colors as closely as possible. I then added water and used the dried iris like a stamp on the page. For my third painting, I stuck with watercolor, this time laying out a warm ombre sequence of paint. I added water to the paint and brushed it onto fern leaves, starting with the lightest color, then moving down to the darker shades. I also added a little violet to the largest leaf to extend the ombre into deeper tones. It looks so pretty. For my fourth painting, I switched to acrylic and used the paint and stamp method again. I tried to match the beautiful fiery red and deep violet tones of the maple leaves, then mixed a brighter lime green to monoprint the fern leaves for contrast. Finally, I had a wood panel that was already painted green, so I used a variety of maple leaves and warm tones to stamp my wood block. I repainted some of the same maple leaves to stamp multiple times in order to fill in and add balance to the composition. Sometimes your first prints may not be enough, so you can layer up to add depth and interest to your visual arrangement. Once finished, I wiped down my workspace, and voila, all done. Five beautiful leaf and flower paintings. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Happy crafting!